welcome back to my studio I hope you're well I have been shopping I've been watching the stats on my vlogs and without a doubt anything that mentions art supplies is very very popular and why not art supplies are so much fun uh, so I've got lots to show you today they haven't all been bought in the one shop, but I've been saving them up to do one really big video of them all. So, don't think you've seen any except this Grey Matters paintbrush that I spoke about in one of the other vlogs. And it's a grey tipped brush. It's been beautiful to paint with. Uh, it's lovely and soft, a little bit stumpier for a bigger headed brush but a lovely round handle uh, tip or butt to the brush so yeah really lovely to use so if I see any more of those I'll definitely be getting getting more and then paint you saw me clean up my station and sort out my paints and I f saw me find double ups of mediums and other paint colors and things well, I've realized I obviously like this color. I went out and bought a big tub and I had all of these in the same color already here. Now, they will vary slightly in color for brand and definitely the density. Um, the Joe Sonia's is a very soft body paint compared to the Matisse structure is much heavier as is golden. And I don't use the Liquitex brand much, but I've, what I have found of it, it's it's been good. It doesn't last as long in the tube on the shelf as these other ones is probably all I've noticed. And I don't know whether that's because of the plastic packaging because once you empty it, it's clear. So, great style to be able to see the exact color of the paint compared to these but I'm not sure that the light getting in does any favors to the paint so if you're going to use this one I'd say rip rip through it don't leave it sitting in the tube too long having said that the Matisse tubes come in a clear tub and I probably haven't had the tubs long enough to notice what they're like oh no I have I've been been using these white I get because I use so much white absolutely love the antique white in the Matisse uh, these actually go really well in the tub so not sure about that one so yes so I bought this color aqua green light and in the Joe Sonia, it's just called Aqua. And in the Golden, it's a Cobalt Teal. It's very similar. Uh, yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous color. And uh, perhaps a little later on, I will flick and show you the difference in the density of those. In other paint news, I I don't like yellow, but I've realized being a primary color, I really need to have yellow in my repertoire. I can make all sorts of colors with this. And seeing as I do love the lilac so much, you know, of course they're complementary colors. I don't understand why I don't like yellow when I love purple so much. So anyway, I'm pushing forward and this is just a primary yellow. I'll show you, because I've been shaking it around. I mean, if, if you're into yellow, it's a gorgeous yellow. But yeah, I thought it was time for me to start to embrace yellow. Therefore, I also bought Yellow Mid. It's an Azo in the Matisse structure. So slightly deeper and yeah, I'm gonna have a go. I'm gonna have a go of yellow. <laughs> and the other colors, 
was Australian Sap Green is just a, a restock. I've been using a tube and I decided I really needed a bigger volume. This is the colour that I always have in as the foliage in the teacup paintings. It's really great for leafy foliage colour. And the other one, which is probably a bit, should be a staple, is some fallow green. It's a really, really lovely, dense colour that you really don't need a lot of. Not sure why I decided I needed a tub of. In, yeah, see the, the richness in there. This mixed with a bright pinky color makes a really gorgeous bluey green like a um, duck egg is it called duck egg blue uh, yeah it makes yeah it makes a very lovely greeny blue sorry not a not a a gray blue <laughs> it makes a really lovely gray blue like duck egg blue I, i'll show you that as well we'll do i've realized when i've done other arts art hall art supply vlogs i'm showing you it like this and i'm not showing you any swatching or anything like that so we'll, we'll have a play and i'll show you all of these things the other paint i got just to round out my reds is a quin red Quinacridone, the word that I find I can't say on camera. <laughs> so yeah, that'll be that'll be a nice uh, kind of more fire engine red. I tend to use the Quin violet, so tending towards more blue, more purpley, and this is a bit truer to the the red, the primary red. So I thought, yeah, as I said, trying to get um, embrace some of the primaries. And then I also saw this, which looks really lovely. It's called Midnight Blue. And it's a very, very deep blue, almost like a blue, blue black, maybe. It's not, it's uh, hard to show. I'll show you as a swatch. Yeah, why not try? Ugh. everything over yeah I thought I'd try a midnight blue we'll swatch that and I shall give you a look and oh and I've also got a, uh, a cad yellow medium again slightly deeper than the other two so yeah I'm really gonna give it a go with yellow <laughs> Uh, what else? Ah, oh, you saw me a couple of vlogs ago use serviette as wallpaper in the background. So I bought some really lovely other serviette styles that I will play around, not sure which way is up. Again, there's that aquary teal. And this one's really lovely. So yeah, just from uh, the $2 store, they're only a couple of plies, so they'll be really easy to separate and uh, get them onto the canvas. Uh, talking about paper, I got this lovely few sheets of this Japanese paper. It comes in a A4 sheet. And I either use these on canvas or in the teacup paintings where I make that tape out of. Isn't that lovely? It's got a, uh, a gold fleck leaf through it. But just beautiful in the hydrangea. And uh, yeah, this pinky, pinky green again with a bit of gold. Really lovely papers. A little more washi tape. I don't know if you're about to see the pattern. Again, a tiny bit of hint of a pale yellow in there. So, yeah, 
giving it a really good go. And with these paints, I'm wanting to start to mix them a bit smoother or a bit, I don't want to say runnier because it won't be runny, but I'm trying to get it to flow off the brush. I don't want to work the brush so hard. I have been using this matte medium and really loving it. I'm not sure whether I've explained before, but it helps thin down or stretch your paint without making it, making it watery. So you don't lose any of the pigmentation, it runs off the brush. So because I fall in love with that and I want to mix things runnier, I've bought myself a, uh, I think this is for dips and crackers. It's from the kitchen aisle. And yeah, it's just got a nice deep profile. So I'll be able to mix that in. But yeah, gonna give that a go. And I bought some more paper. So this is A3 and it's cold press, I think. I always get mixed up. One, one paper will be hot pressed and the other will be cold pressed and it's to do with how much texture is left. Oops. And so this, oh, I've always worked on very textured paper because I thought I needed to because I was working with acrylic. But I'm gonna give this a go, it's a smooth. It's stiff, but not as stiff as the textured, even though it's still 210 GSM, yeah. But it's archival and uh, there's the details. So yeah, you'll see me painting, painting on that. I'm really enjoying painting on paper. Canvas is wonderful, but paper allows you to not be perhaps so precious. It wasn't cheap, but compared to canvas, you know, I've got 30 sheets here and I wouldn't have been able to buy one canvas. This, oh, maybe one canvas for th what I get in 30 sheets of paper. So if I do something and I don't like it, I can rip it up as papers for collage or background papers or as you saw me do in the terrarium, things I've been playing around with, where I can block out areas that aren't working and keep what is. But yeah, if nothing ever works with it, I can throw it in the bin and not be so, oh my God, I've just thrown out a really expensive canvas. Of course, when I'm using a canvas, you're not guaranteed it's gonna work out. You can always take the canvas off and re-stretch, which you've seen me do, and I have a, a video of how to re how to stretch a canvas. Uh, and that's definitely possible, but yeah, it just something is you're able to switch your brain into. I don't have to be precious about this. It doesn't have to be a work of art at the end of, of it all. You can be a bit freer and less pressured and, and just play. And uh, that's where magic happens when you're playing. The other thing I bought ages and ages ago that I have yet to use, again, as I was cleaning up and <laughs> decluttering and organizing my little trolley there, I found these pens, they're a water brush and you use them with watercolor. So you fill them with water, I can show you. So it's a little bristle end and so you can squeeze more water if you want, pick up watercolor with them. And this one is just, that one was fine. And this one's a medium. So top ones are fine. And the lower one is the medium size. I'm actually going away in a couple of weeks time down to the ocean. And I thought I might pack these with my watercolors and a little sketchbook and hopefully get some sketching. I'm only there for a couple of days, but hopefully I can get some sketching in. And of course you will come with me if I do. That's that. And the other, so the other thing I did buy is a little sketchbook. This one is by Elements of Art. And it's a lovely soft, I wanted a soft cover book. So it has, it's just A5, I think. Um, it has plain pages and it also has some ruled pages. Oh, I've got gesso over that already. I wanted a dedicated diary for colour swatching. As I said, I'm 
embracing yellow and I'm wanting to really see how I can extend my colours and my range and paint uh, more in colour harmony because again I found <laughs> when I cleaned up I found my pocket colour wheel which is a fabulous tool. So finding that was like, right, I'm going to get really sorted with color swatching. Because another way to get your own style is to have your own palette. And I do have my go-to colors, but so I'm just wanting to extend that a little, a little more and just revisit color harmony, complementary colors, and all of that sort of thing. So cleaning up, look what you <laughs> Find you when you're organized. My daughter, the last, th oh no, I've got, I bought this gorgeous jug. It was only $20 and it's from Provincial Living. And uh, yeah, look at the little, it's just got a suggest, just a little hint of color in the pattern. Uh, but I thought that'd be lovely in still life, to use in still life. It's got this really beautiful shape and a nice solid background. $20. Barkin. Love it. And the last thing that I was going to say, my daughter surprised me. She found this book at an op shop and thought it'd be a really great reference tool for me. And it's fantastic. And when I opened it, I found this little note. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, I'm blessed. So I'll quickly show you. There was look at that. Look, yellow. See, I'm getting there. <laughs> Gorgeous. That's super lovely. I could see that as a still life. Yeah, so really, really sweet. It's... So thanks so much, Ree. So there's everything I have saved up to show you today. Let's turn the camera around and I'll, we'll start some color swatching. Okay, here we are. Here's a bit of this tape. colors where will we begin so this is the fellow green green with titanium white and here's the two of them mixed together more white so sap green again the complement of red and a touch of red which you can do when they're complements to really mute it down. And with white. So this is the yellow mid azo with some white. red and the yellow and with plenty of titanium white gorgeous really lovely yellowy green some white
That's a nice yellow. That was with a bit of titanium white in it. Very nice. Oh, that's nice. Okay, and the primary yellow. And with white. Lovely lemon. Wow, that's nice. Here's the orange. Don't like orange. <laughs> With a little bit of titanium white in it. Oh, that singing, that is beautiful. Very similar to that one. I'll show you the difference between all of these teals. So this is the Liquitex Basics bright aqua green golden cobalt teal We've got a nice broad head on them the golden colors so you can get plenty of paint out So I'm not sure if you can tell, but it's a much heavier body paint. And it's quite creamy, the Liquitex. And one is never better than the other. It's what you prefer to paint with really in the end. But there's no doubt golden paints, they, they know what they're doing there at Golden. So this is the Matisse structure, which is exactly the same as this. It's just this is a tube and that's a tub. So yes, slightly different in color. And the Joe Sonia, so Joe Sonia Aqua, should see is much softer, but very close to the golden, golden te cobalt teal. It does say aqua green. They, I don't know whether Matisse do an aqua more like a cobalt color. And the last one we haven't done yet. Oh, now this is a flow. I didn't realize when I picked it up. This is a flow. I've not used the Matisse flow. Oh, that sits quite well for a flow paint, doesn't it? Oh yeah. Nice. You can get a really lovely bluey grey, almost a French, French blue. There, that one reminds me a lot of this Joe Sonia French blue. Yeah, see, see that where the brush was wet and how I'm losing the opacity already with the Joe Sonia, which is why I'm moving away from using Joe Sonia paints. I know I've said I wanted to add the matte medium to paint to get more flow, but I want to still be able to have the structure in the paint when I add any water to it. I don't want it to do this. But if you don't want to add water and you just want a really lovely flowy paint, then Joe Sonia's is for you. Um, but you saw even that flow paint, look how thick that is. If I had a bit of water, that's quite a lot of water. And I'm, I haven't lost any to starting there, which will give me a really lovely wash. Yeah. But and I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but here I can see so much of the paper through here, the white of the paper. 
here, even though where it's thin, it's still got that dense color to it. So this is why I'm saying to spend more on your paint. So yeah, as it's drying, you can see this is still, I can't see the white of the paper. It's thin, but it's still blue. Here where it's thin, it's got the white of the paper. So there's all of the things I've collected for it to show you over the last few months, I think really. And uh, I hope you enjoyed watching that. And I've found my way to like yellow or even maybe love yellow through those gorgeous salmon -y, pale orange types of colors. Thrilling, I'm, I'm really excited and uh, I'll be playing lots more to create an extended color palette. I hope that's inspired you to get your paints out or go shopping for some. Buy what you can, at least in the primary colors. And as you can see, there is no end to the amount of colors I'd be able to mix, even with those colors here today, which is really a, a primary yellow, a primary red, and using the teal as, as the blue, or even, I know it's fallow green, this bluey color was from the fallow green. So even with those, you can mix up all amount of colors. So go for it, get into your studio, splash some paint around, have fun, enjoy the process, play, relax, enjoy, have fun in the studio. And I'll see you next week. Bye.